Ruiz. Welcome to another edition of Truth and Rhythm. This is the interview show that gets deep in the pocket with contemporary music's foremost masters of the groove. I am your host, Scott Dr. GX Wolfi. If you enjoy this programming, subscribe to the Funkin' Stuff channel on YouTube, which is where Truth and Rhythm lives, and be an advocate by spreading the word among fellow funk, jazz, and R&B music lovers. Join Truth and Rhythm's membership program through Patreon. You can also submit a direct donation to the cause anytime at funkandstuff.net. At that site, you can also purchase the book, Everything's on the One, The First Guide of Funk. Shop for official Truth and Rhythm and Funk and Stuff merchandise and use the Amazon links for all of your online purchases, which allocates a percentage to this show. For those of you who go the extra step in supporting the show, you have my heartfelt gratitude for allowing us to continue to shine the light on those special artists whose quest is to find truth in rhythm. I'm delighted to welcome to the Truth and Rhythm Mothership, original and new members of Philadelphia R&B and funk group Fat Larry's Band. The group released eight studio albums from 1976 to 1986, along with nearly 20 singles. Included among those were the four top 40 U.S. dance songs, Fascination, Here Comes the Sun, Looking for Love Tonight, and Act Like You Know. In addition, the band song Zoom, not to be confused with the Commodore's song of the same name, went all the way up to number two on the UK chart, as well as number 10 in Australia. Fellas, so great to have you. How's everybody? Great. Oh, Thank right. you for having me. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, hey, uh, let's do some introductions to get started. Uh, let's start with Jimmy. Oh, good day. My name is Jimmy Lee, and I am one of the founding members of Fat Larry's band, I, in addition, Fat Larry and I were roommates uh, for, for many of years in uh, the greater Northeast uh, Philadelphia. Uh, I'm originally from Camden, New Jersey. Uh, they stole me from a really big group called the Ebony's. Uh, Fat Larry came and saw me play one day. I was playing two horns, and he gave me a proposal to join a superstar group called Blue Magic. And uh, that's who I am. I'm a trombonist, saxophonist, and... Uh, for writing purposes, I play piano, and uh, it's it's been a wonderful ride, um, being one of the founder members and one of the members that are still alive, uh, for us to go back out on tour again. It's it's a we are going back on tour. It's a really big deal. I'm really happy about it. And here's my art. I'm Art Austin. Uh one 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 of the founder members of Fat Eric's Band. I came a little bit later after him, but nevertheless, I put a lot of a lot of work in writing songs and doing vocals and background vocals, anything I could do to elevate the song. The songs that you mentioned, looking for love and uh, here comes the sun. All that, all that, I, I had something to do with both of those songs. And by the way, I was with did work with Vince Montana. Uh, I did a lot of work, work I did with Sister. Mr. Tillage, I did with them. Anyway, it's a pleasure doing this again. And I'm happy, real happy to work with Butch. And Butch is my main man. I'm ready. Let's do this. All right. Thank you, Art. <laughs> and we have uh, Dr. Salam. Tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Yeah, I, um, I'm Dr. Salam. Uh, I've been in the music business for uh, since elementary school, actually. I started on percussion with drums, playing in the orchestra, reading music, and met, I didn't meet uh, Fat Larry, Larry James until high school. We were drummers together, Teddy Pendergrass, Fat Larry and myself, and Ron Tyson from The Temptations. We all went to Thomas Edison High School. And so uh, 
we would get together and play drums sometimes. I played traps and timbales, mainly timbales and congas. And I played timbales with a, a, a jazz drill team called the Challengers Drill Team from Philadelphia. Oh, the same. And I was the first drummer there. Very good. Thank you for that. And uh, lastly, but not least, we have Carl. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, my name is Carl Gray, and uh, I'm actually the newest member of Fat Larry's band. And I want to uh, thank uh, the original founding member, uh, Jimmy Lee, for accept accepting me into the group. And it's an honor and a pleasure to be here. And Carl, what do you play? Well, I'm just, uh, I don't play any instrument per se, but I am a, uh, a vocalist, singer, very good. Well, glad to have you here. Welcome aboard. Um, Thank you. So being from Philly, let's kind of start our story there a little bit. You know, such a rich, amazing place for soul music. Um, what was it like for you guys coming up in that environment? And how did that sort of shape your musical foundation? And uh, who would like to jump in first on that one? Well, well, let me, let me, let me say this to you. Fat Larry's band is a lot of bands put together to one. We we are on the recordings of all the major acts on WMOT Atlantic Records. Uh, Butch Ingram was also a part of that management there. But uh, Fat Larry's band is actually the Magic of the Blue. The original members of the Magic of the Blue are the founding members of Fat Larry's band. So. That's that's the true story. So we toured uh, as the Magic of the Blue uh, behind the superstar group Blue Magic, which is how we got our break. We got our break by being, uh, it's a war up on stage when you're on tour. You're up against uh, other musicians that are at superstar level, other groups with mega hits, and you have to come out with a show that, pe that make people say, wow. And that's where we come from. We come from the wow scenario. That's why we rehearse so hard. Uh, you know, we toured with Earth, Wind and & Fire and all the great groups at that level. And when you're at that level, playing at that level uh, with Earth, Wind and & Fire horns and you got a horn section, the Commodores, they got a horn section, it, it, you're at war and you're doing the best that you can. James Brown's got the JBs and Fred Wesley and them guys and you up against them guys. And so we rehearsed extremely hard. We, we, we would go into rehearsal and Alan Rubens and Steve Bernstein would send food over and we wouldn't leave till five, five o'clock to crack a dawn. We'd come in six, seven o'clock, wouldn't leave until the next morning because we get ready to go out on tour. So that's where Fat Larry's band come from. We come from hard work and guys who didn't ask for nothing. We put the time in. Uh, we put the stage show on. We made the records. We're very grateful that we did extremely well in the UK uh, and over there in uh, Germany and up that seacoast there. We've done extremely well. And um, to be with this team right here is an exceptional thing. To be here with Art and... Uh, Dr. Salon and uh, Mr. Carl um, they have a great stage show to present. And uh, we're, we're really looking forward to being together, the four of us with our, with our band. It's a wonderful show. We've got some great hits and all of these guys, Art's got a great voice. Dr. Salon has a wonderful first tenor. Carl's put right there in the middle. I sing the strong second tenor and Art, He's just got one of those Teddy Pendergrass voices. So he, he doesn't sound like any of us. So each one of us have our own lane to run. And I'm telling you, man, you're in for a great treat when you come to an FLB show. Come on, Art. Oh, yeah. I'm ready to do this. I'm ready to have a good time and make other people smile. Get something real happy going on inside of you. You know, because we do have a lot to share. And I want to share mine with all of y'all, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I want to make friends with everybody. How about that? Yeah, we can't wait to see our um, fans on tour. One thing we really want people to know is that 
We don't have a problem with taking a picture with you. Art and I don't have a problem with shaking your hand. We don't have a problem with any of that. We don't have a problem with, you know, coming after the stage, you know, outside outside of uh, the stage and being kind to people who have been our uh, fans for so many years. It's a, it's a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity. Dr. Salah. Yeah. I mean, we... We all have, we all have that background, you know. My my background, my strong uh, church background. My father uh, was a minister of the gospel, and so I got those roots, you know, growing up yeah, yeah. with that gospel background, singing, you know, and watching my father uh, preach from the pulpit. And he surprised me one day. I had a piano in the house. And uh, I had rented, actually, a piano. Uh, and I was in piano player. My father came in and ran through the keys. And in all those years, he never told me he could play piano. Mm. Wow. And did a little tap dance. I said, wow. They call it a chauffeur. I forget what they call it. It's a name. We call it tap dance, but they call it something else, you yeah. know. Shuffling. Shuffling, you're right, right. Yeah, Art said that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're, the, you're the oldest member here. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, growing up, you know, in... Uh, I actually, I am. In, growing up in music, you know, was a wonderful, wonderful experience playing in the orchestra, you know, reading music and getting the chance in some stage plays. So, uh, and ver the various groups uh, from the Sound of Philadelphia, I've had that uh, opportunity to sing and perform with as well. Come on, Brother Carl. Yeah, well, I'd just like to say that uh, once again, it's an honor to uh, be in the group, Frank Larry's band, and th I'm gonna say thank you to Jimmy Lee for accept accepting me as a newest member in the group. And uh, as Dr. Salam indicated back, the Sound of Philadelphia, the music scene was incredible back in the 70s and Fat Larry's band was part of a part of that uh, uprising of great music coming out of the sound of Philadelphia and it's starting to be uh, rebuilt again and we're going to give everyone a great great uh, show tell, tell I, uh, me uh, uh, <clears throat> about getting that first record deal back in 76 oh, um, wow. you know how exciting was that and uh, what right. were you guys hoping to become when you first started? Well, that's, I'm, I'm the only one here that did that. And so that so I can answer that question for you. That was a big deal. We were struggling musicians. Although we were the superstar magic of the blue, we still had to eventually break off from doing blue magic jobs to, to pursue our career as Fat Larry's band. And when we did that, the well ran dry financially. And a couple of us had kids and we were trying to make ends meet. And all of a sudden, the word came down that the record deal came through. When the record deal came through, the day that we signed, the day that we signed for the first album, we all got a check. We all, we, we, we all knew how much the total amount was that we got for the record deal. And each one of us took a percentage of that. And then we left. 150, 200,000 to finish the record off with. But each one of us, I, I believe we got right under $10,000 a piece. And back then, a loaf of bread was 37 cents. 39 cents. <laughs> <laughs> 37 cents. <laughs> Cheap. Money back then. Yeah, yeah. We got a little under, we got a little under 10,000 on our first deal. And uh, our lawyer, and I thank him, his name was Lloyd Remick. And uh, Mr. Remick set us up really well, um, but we still struggled hard, and we still we still worked hard. But what saved us was we were all studio musicians for WMOT Records. So we did all of the live albums. We did all we did the Latin Casino in the Great Cherry Hill, New Jersey, where all of the top acts went before they opened up Atlantic City. When they opened up Atlantic City, they had to shut down the Latin Casino. So you know, it's been a, it's been a, a a great you know. My neighbor is Vince Montana. He lives in Cherry Hill. Well, he's deceased, 
and um, and, and it used to rehearse in his garage. <laughs> yeah, we used to rehearse in his garage. I remember me and me and Larry uh, didn't have nothing to eat at at our apartment, as as single guys do, right? So Larry said, "Get in the car, get in the car." <laughs> I went and got in the car. He had an old white Cadillac, and we went to his mom's house. His mom opened the door and said, "Okay, y'all come to get something to eat." We was like, "Yeah." <laughs> what, yeah, I miss that boy, man. What, 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 can, what, what can you tell viewers and listeners about Larry? Um, you know, in terms of uh, his presence, personality, and also just his talent. He had big personality. Yeah, he persuaded me. Yes, he did. He, he, his personality was so overwhelming. He persuaded me to leave a group that was doing really well in the tri-state area, that we were really big in our area, and it was constant work. And he persuaded me to leave the Ebony's and come with Blue Magic, which was a big, which was a world act. They, they were, they're, they're a world act. But he persuaded me because I didn't know how big Blue Magic was. I, I just didn't know. I was locked within my tri-state area. And, and we were so big there that it didn't matter to go anywhere else until I saw somewhere else. <laughs> Once you see it and you've been overseas and you work over there, you really don't want to work nowhere else. You really, you really want to work where people really appreciate you worldwide. And uh, we love we love working overseas and, and the larger arenas. That's, that's what Fat Larry's Band is for. Yeah. That's that's what that's what we need to be. Yeah. That's the kind of thing we should be doing. Yeah. All the time. Our our stage yeah. performance. Our stage performances as such that it's made for the big stage. When we go to smaller stages or stages that are a, a, a smidgen smaller than the giant stages, our, our show is, you know, we have to change the format of the show, just shrink it down a little bit. But uh the voices are great. Um Carl, tell them what voice you sing. Yeah, I'm in the uh, baritone uh, range in the group. I'm in baritone. And Dr. Salon, baritone. Is, Dr. Salon is what? Yes, I, I sing I sing baritone as well, but my claim to fame is probably my first tenor. So I sing the first tenor in the group, you know, down to uh, baritone, bass baritone. Art. Second tenor, he thinks I can do some first tenor, not a lot, but I can do some first tenor. My main squeeze is percussion and singing. That's, that's it. Yeah. Uh, I did some work with Sister Sledge. I got a lot of stuff on them. Yeah. Just doing some things. That's all that's what I do. Yeah, we're my life. When, when, you guys were, when you guys were coming up uh, in the mid to late 70s, uh, who were some of the, like, Groups that maybe you admired or emulated or kind of wanted to be as good or better than. Well, that's that's an easy one. Uh, Fat Larry's band was the opening act for the Trans, and uh, being they had Earl, Earl, Earl Young has been on, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah being they had well Earl when 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 we opened for the Trans, Earl was the drummer. They didn't move him out front until he did, uh, you know, some singing stuff. Then we just sing my heart. Some other great songs. He's got a great uh, bass one. Just go and burn on he Yeah, yeah, yeah. He killed it on just go and burn on he Yeah, yeah. He he ripped a couple good things, but those things have worked out really well for us. But we were the opening act for the Tramps on on most of their shows, and um, we we they hit it hard. They were strong. They were much. Oh, uh, we were about equal in size. Yeah, we were about equal in size. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The groups were about equal. We were running ten plus people on stage, so the sounds were pretty equivalent. They just had to hit, and we did. <laughs> I feel like the uh, the people who influenced me probably were was the most was Earth, Wind, and Fire. I. Yeah. Uh, uh, Philip Bailey was my hero because I, I sound, I, I identified with his sound, 
and I believe I can give him a run for his money. On the upcoming live shows, you, you won't hear it on the pre-recorded albums, the previously recorded Fat Larry Band albums, but on the albums coming up, you will hear that, and especially on the live shows. So, uh, you know, I I, uh, I put myself out there, so Philip is probably going to be calling me, yo, Doc, what's, what was up with that statement, man? I'll tell you, when we... Um... When we toured, when we toured, when we toured with Earth and Fire, um, one of the things me and Fat Larry was standing backstage, and as the equipment came off of the eighteen wheel tractor trailers, they were in these white cases, and it said Earth, Wind, and Fire in black, and these cases was all white. Now mm-hmm. there's a family that 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 makes these cases, and the name of this family is called Anvil. So. We were back to Maurice White was alive then. And Fat Larry says to, and I'm standing there, and he says to Maurice White, where y'all get those cases from? We want those cases. So Verdine came over and said, we'll pick you up at your hotel and take you over to, to Mr. M. So they had this great big studio thing with wood and all kinds of machines to cut it up all kinds of measuring sticks and everything. And they came over to where we were performing at, which was some big venue. We were mm-hmm. with Earth and Fire and Natalie Cole, I believe it was. And they measured out each one of our instruments. They measured out- uh, Larry's drums. Uh, Larry's drums. And each percussion. Yep, all of them. Each, no kids, all of them. Each one of the horns, they measured them out separately and they made one big case for the horns. Yep. And they put everything in there. Now, the money fell out of heaven, and they got paid. The cases, <laughs> the cases showed up, and uh, it was it was a. Uh, that's how we started using white cases that were anvil because we saw Earth Wind and Fire do it. <laughs> what what year do you think that was about? Oh, let me see. Seventy seven, seventy eight, maybe a little later, seventy nine, maybe. Uh, 76, 78, 76, 77, 78. 77, somewhere there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, somewhere around there. 77, 78, 79, somewhere around there. I feel comfortable with saying that. That's cool. I got I got to mention on that first record, Down on the Avenue, was a, a really nice funk track, and it's been sampled a lot. Um, yeah. How, how did you guys feel when, um, you know, something like that gets sampled and picked up? You know, did you feel flattered or were you like, no, hey, I, what are they I doing? I feel pretty proud about that. I, I feel pretty happy about it. At least it's not going by the wayside to oblivion. That, that down on, is using. I'm sorry. Quick, quick. No, quick, quick. No. Down, down on the Avenue was written by Erskine Williams. He's from Buffalo, New York. And... Um, he left us to go uh, play with, uh, Rick, with, with, Rick Rick, James, with, yeah. with Rick James yeah. and the Stone, Stone City guys. But when we when we recorded down on the avenue, it was um, it was never it was never going to be an A side. It's something how the song you think is going to be a B really is the one that catches. And down on the avenue was never considered an A side. It was always considered to be a B side release. And um, Erk, Erk, we call him Erk. Erk, we, matter of fact, we even lived in, all of us lived right around in the same development out in the greater Northeast Philadelphia. And um, Erk wrote, wrote a really nice thing, but uh, Fat Boy put a really nice heavy foot on it too. Really, really nice drum beat he put on it. Because that sampled a lot when uh, Erskine wrote the song. Great song. Nice song. I remember writing the horn parts for that. How we, because Earth didn't write the horn parts, the horn section. We came up with the horn. horn. You know, I remember. I remember. The, that's a different chord structure that you'll hear the horns playing than the normal uh, unison stuff. Yeah. Just thought you like. <laughs> no, that's that's excellent. Who, who's your who's your uh, favorite horn player? Uh, as a trombonist, I like uh, naturally JJ. Uh, naturally, uh, Wayne Henderson from the Jazz Crusaders. Uh, I, I, I got to give props to my boy Fred Wesley. 
he, he's at the top of the game. And uh, all of those guys, they never learned my solos, but I learned all of theirs. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the, one of the amazing things about um, Fat Larry's band, you know, I'm from Los Angeles, so I was not in the Philly area. So it was a little bit of a different experience. But, um, you know, you guys were so prolific. You put out so many records, even though, you know, they didn't necessarily, you know, go to the top of the chart or, you know, that kind of thing. But you just kept coming with it. Um, what was like the the thinking, you know, in, in terms of, of that? You know, did you feel like you needed more promotion than maybe you got? Or did you care much about charts and hits? Or We, we thought about it, but it was like Alan and Steve. They're the ones that you know, did all the promotional work for us. And we always thought that we needed more, more, but they had a, a, a long repertoire of singers and acts and stuff. They couldn't just focus on us. Not that they didn't want to do it. And, and when we did get, you know, stuff that was, like the songs we get ready to do, um, looking, um, looking, for love. looking for Love. They did. They, they, put, they put money behind that stuff and, you know, we started doing something. So, but, we never gave up. We still didn't give up to this point. We still want to do this. I want to do it till the day I die. Huh? I yes, mean, sir. Yes. How did it feel when you heard Looking for Love tonight on the radio for the first time? Or, um, Ooh, you know, that always tickled me to hear my stuff on the radio. That tickles. So, what? Um, I'm sorry, brother. Go ahead. You talk. One time, uh, in our first album, there's a big station here in Philadelphia called WDAS. And the big guy was a guy called Butterball. He was a, <laughs> a big Caucasian guy. Yeah, Joe Thomas. And, and we all thought he was a black man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, then, well, anyway, uh, this was a pretty big moment for me, although I was still broke. I was in my car with my mother. And our and she was listening to WDAS Butterball, and the and the record came <laughs> the record came on, <laughs> and she said, "What you doing riding with me? <laughs> you ready to yeah, the right, radio?" You know, right, right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless my mother's heart. She didn't pull no punches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that those were joyous occasions uh, to be able to allow my mother to hear me come across the airways and actually and actually see someone pay for my plane ticket, my my food, my lodging, my my travel to and from the airport on my talent. I started playing at the age of seven years old. I started playing trombone. I started learning how to read music at the age of seven. My arms were so short I couldn't hit seventh position. They shook. They told me how to put it with and hold it with my toes, mm. and then pull it up with my mouth. Because seventh position was so far, I, my arms weren't long enough to hit it, and it's really worked out well. You know, it's worked mm. out well. I'm very happy with uh, all the benchmarks that I set for myself of the venues that I wanted to play and the albums and records that I wanted to put out. I, I've actually reached it. So this uh, this up and coming tour with the four of us, uh, I'm I'm real excited about it, man. We're gonna smoke. We're gonna smoke it. I have no doubt. And before we part ways, we will definitely give folks more information about about that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what? Fat Larry's band, of course, always brought you know the dance music and some funk and some R&B and a few ballads sprinkled in, but. Uh, I always thought of the group in the band as being very fun, you know, um, uplifting, uh, fun spirit. Look at me. Can't you see I'm fun? Woo! <laughs> <I'm in> <laughs> so, you know, uh, conceptually, you know, what? how would you describe the, the band's concept that way? Good. The old band? Fat Larry's band. You are know, now? No, no. Uh, throughout well, the years, we, yeah, we we pretty good, but we have a lot more conversation now, a lot more input as to where we're going and what we're doing, and along with Butch, yeah, we can't go wrong, not at all. So, we're hold on to your seat. That's all you do when you see us. When we when we come out this time, hold on to your seat. 
<laughs> what a great opportunity. We're the, like my partner here to say, buckle up, because we're in a great opportunity to uh, come in after this uh, horrific uh, season of illness for everyone. The open theaters are open. Uh, Fat Larry's Band is a festival act, and we're, we're good to go anywhere. But you see us at a festival at these open venues all over the world. Uh, that's our forte. We're also good inside, but I'll tell you, you get more people outside than you do inside. Mm. So, uh, you know, we, we, we're, we're working hard. We're in rehearsals five days a week currently, uh, preparing uh, to pull out in the next few weeks or whenever the record company tells us to go. But just so that you know, uh, not to be redundant, but we are in rehearsals five days a week. Uh, ain't that right, Carl? Yes, sir. <laughs> we, we, we perfected twerking. We're going to twerk. We're going to put that in there. See how that work out. See how that work out. Yeah, see how that work out. We're going to start twerking. He said we're going to start twerking. <laughs> we know the twerk is. Do, we don't know. If he, do we know what the twerk is? Late lives in South South. Yeah, they, yeah they, you see, you see the twer twerking. Well, I, I prefer you know, seeing the female persuasion you know, twerk, twerking. but whatever works for you, you know. What? We we gone, we gone. <laughs> like I said, hold on to your seat, by <laughs> Hey, um, how did things? Let me ask you, how did things change for the group when Zoom became a hit like that? I mean, that must have really changed things quite a bit. Yeah. Well, that that was almost like an overnight thing. Nobody expected that. They came from out of the dark alleyway. Zoom, 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 zoom. But you have to appreciate it. People still, still in love with the group, and that's that's a good thing. That's what all of us was looking at, and all of all of the work that was put out before us. Well, we can stand here and know that that work will still be. Although a lot of us cross over, we're still here doing it, and we're still fighting for them, so that everybody can hear hear what we got to put down. Hold on your seat. I'm telling you. Buckle up. That song made you guys big in the UK, right? Or were you already big in yeah. the UK? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the national anthem for us. Yeah. Any idea why it just struck a chord like it did? I, I, I don't I don't know. I, well, let me say this to you. That that song is a wedding song. Mm. And it, uh, weddings are positive things and People are just looking for great opportunities to be positive. Zoom is a song about a wedding and a setup about a wedding. And uh, to be quite honest with you, I've been to many, many weddings, and and Zoom is the main song. That's the song that they want the, the, the couple to dance to and all those type of things. I, I've been in Paris. Uh, I was in Paris uh, two years ago, just before the pandemic. And uh, I'm sitting there having something to eat, me and my wife, and over the over the over the intercom system at the place where we're eating, they're playing Zoom. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there, nobody even know who I am, but they playing Zoom. I'm like, mm -hmm. I told you, we, this is the place. <laughs> <laughs> it came from out of a dark alleyway, and the song is still solid and it's good right now. Right, you bring it out and do it today, and you'll see. You'll see the effect that it causes people. When you think about when you think about Zoom, you think about love that explodes. Yeah, yeah. Like I it's, told you, it's good solid song. My, my boy, who who was one of the writers on that, just passed away. Um, Bobby Eli. Yeah. And Bobby, I was in Bobby's studio, and he had a gold record of it up there. You know, mm -hmm. that was cool. You know. Bobby and you guys, Bobby. you know, yeah, yeah. We, we've we've been in great scenarios to be successful, but let, let's be clear. Fat Larry's band has worked hard to. Send, I remember that I re, just just came to me. I remember the day we were in a hotel and Fat Larry said to me and the other guys, "Man, we need to have our own thing." I remember the day it happened. It just came to me. I remember, I remember the day of the conception of that we needed to be out on our own. I remember the day when it happened. Mm -hmm. I, it just came to me. 
Well, that was before we parted with them. That was the day that the idea came. You know, it, it was like two or three years after that before we were able to. Mm -hmm. started getting real funny. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, they started but bless good. God, uh, you know, we want to thank Ted Mills for, yeah. uh, you know, giving us the opportunity to be on tour with him sure. and Vern mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and the Sawyer brothers yeah. and uh, the mm -hmm. late Keith Beaton and the late uh, uh, um, Richard, uh, Richard Green. Green. Oh, yeah, who's Blue Magic I sang with. I sang with Richard Pratt's Blue Magic. Carl sang with uh, the stylistic, not the stylistic, but Van Field stylistic. Uh, Carl also sang with, uh, who else, Carl? The, the, the Delphonics. What, which Delphonics? Uh, the, uh, the, uh, William Hart's Delphonics. Yeah, the late William Hart. The late William Hart, yes. Yeah, and um, Dr. Salon sang with both of them. Yeah, uh, both brothers, both William Hart, the late William Hart, yeah. and also his, his brother, Wilbur Hart. And both of y'all sang with the real trance. Years. And both of y'all sang with the real trance. Right, with the trance. Yes, right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Blessed to go over to, uh, over to Europe. Yeah. Several times. Yeah. So that was a good experience. Yes, we're hard, you, you know, this core of guys here, we're hardworking cats in the music industry. We actually uh, understand both sides of the coin. There's two sides of the coin. There's the performance side, and then there's the business side. So we have a great business partner uh, and management company, and he has different rooms for, uh, for Fat Larry's band uh, that handle different things for us. We don't handle it. Butch Ingram and his corporation, they handle whatever it is that has to be done business-wise. We handle the stage. And uh, it's a great marriage between us. I'm very, I'm very grateful to their expertise. Uh, but you got to have professional people who are representing you. And, and, and Fat Larry's band right now, right here, right now, we got the best representation. Yeah, that's that's so critical because uh you know too many folks have major problems with the business side of things in this in this yeah. business for sure there's much more to this great truth and rhythm interview just continue on to the next part of the episode also be sure to subscribe to this channel if you've already done so please share it with friends and become a member by joining truth and rhythm on patreon or consider donating at funkinstuff.net thank you very much